welcome to this, the first of two videos that show you how to save data into text files. My name is Andy Wicks and in this video you'll see how to capture data from user input, how to ensure that names are formatted correctly and how to save several items of data to a text file. We're going to do all that using two small programs. The first program works fine but the second program will improve on the technique and show you a couple of little tricks that are really quite useful. So let's talk through this first file. All this first file does is ask the user for their name, their age and their height and then saves it all to a file. Let me show you that running. Here we have an input box that asks the user for their name. I'm going to type in Andy Wicks and I press OK. Now it asks for my age. Well, as most of you will know, I'm only 23 really. And for my height. I think I'll become a bit shorter. I'd like that. And it will keep doing that for as long as I keep entering names and ages and heights. So uh, I think I'll be the Queen now and her age is 83 and she's probably 185. To stop entering data I'm just going to press the OK button and that will tell the computer program that I've now finished entering data. It asks me to press the OK button several times but I can live with that and what it's produced is a file called name, age and height and in that file there's Andy Wicks, the Queen and so on. So let's see how that was achieved. Well at the top we need our import statements. We're going to need file writer because we're writing a file. We're going to need IO exception because there could be cases where file writing doesn't work and we're going to need print writer because that's the bit that actually does the writing out and we need J option pane because that's the bit that's going to get the input from the user so let's now dive into the code itself at the top of main you can see I'm declaring three variables name age and height they're all strings and they're all going to start off as empty that's fairly easy now we come on to the file writing part. It's usual to use file writers with try catch statements. In that way, if something goes wrong, your program doesn't crash. However, you've got to be careful because if you try using it without try catch, in some cases it won't work at all, whether you, your code is correct or not. So the rule is always use try catch. So in the try part, we're going to look at creating a file writer object called outfile. That's going to be the file itself. And this is going to be a new file writer object. It's going to take two parameters. The name of the file, in my case, name, age, height, dot txt, and whether this program should overwrite the file that was previously there. If you have false, that will overwrite the file. And so anything you create now will be a new version of a file with the same name. If you have true, then you're appending data to the file. So it would take the existing name, age and height file and add whatever else you put into it. Now I'm going to have it as false, overwrite, because I'd like you to be able to see the differences between what I'm creating. But in reality, if this were a real program, you'd probably want to set that to true. So now we set out the print writer out object, which is a new print writer, and it goes to the output file. It could go to the screen or to something else, but it's going to a file. Now we're going to do a do loop. This do loop will keep going 
whilst name is not empty. So if there's something in name, it'll go back and do the next one. And that's our loop. That's the bit of code that ensures that our user can enter as many or as few data items as they want. Now let's have a look inside the loop. We're going to get name from the user using J option pane show input dialog. On the screen is going to appear the message please enter your name. Leave blank to stop. That tells the user that if they don't want any more data items they just don't enter a name. Next we move on to getting the age from the user. Note that this is coming in as a string. If you wanted to do calculations with age then you'd have to do the conversion from string to presumably integer. Similarly with height, we're asking the user for their height, you'd have to convert the string to float. So these three statements together take the input from the user and put it into the three variables. The problem now is how do we store that on the file? And there are two techniques. In this program, I'm going to look at storing it all on one line. In the next version of the program, I'm going to show you how to store it on three separate lines. If name is not empty, it's going to output the name, age and height to the file out. And that will send it to nameageheight.txt. But to show that each item is separate, I'm going to put a tab character in between. You'll see in the next video why that tab character is important. But if we want to store all the data on one line, a tab character is a useful thing to use to separate each item of data. So it will keep saving that line until the username is empty. Then it will close the file and hopefully the catch will not have been actioned. So let's see that in action again quickly. This time I'm just going to have Andy Wicks, I'm going to put in my age and I'm going to put in my height. Uh, apparently I've grown 10 centimeters since the last version. I'm now going to leave my name blank and the new version of name age height just has Andy Wicks. Notice that the Queen is now absent. So let's have a look at the second version of name age height. The import files are exactly the same. The variables at the top are exactly the same. The only thing that's changed is what's happened between the try and the catch. And here I'm going to go through each bit again. First of all, we set up a new file writer object in exactly the same way. So it's going to be a new file writer object with the file name nameageheight.txt. And it's still going to be false because I want to show you the text that it produces. We're going to have the same print writer object out from a new print writer object that goes to out file. Now we come on to the next change. Name is equal to input show dialog please enter your name leave blank to stop will get the user to enter their name but now I've moved the next show input dialogs into the if statement and that means they will only get actioned if name is not empty so instead of having to press enter all the way through each of the option dialogs in this way we can ensure that the program just asks for one item, the name, and then leaves the others empty automatically if the name is empty. So age and height are obtained from the user using an input dialog box, but now we come on to the next little trick. I'm going to output print line proper case name. Proper case is a computing term that says make sure that the first letter is capitalized and the other letters are all lowercase. And this is a piece of code 
that I've defined. I'm going to show you that piece of code in just a moment. But for the, now, take it from me that the method proper case will allow the user to enter something in all lowercase, for example, or for that matter, all uppercase, and will then convert it to the proper case for name. It will then output that proper case version of name, it'll output age, and it'll output height. We're now outputting three separate lines of data. This is the other way of saving the data. And we'll be looking at how you read that in, in the next video. So it will keep asking for name, age and height as long as name is not empty and as long as the name is not empty it will save each item of data on a separate line and proper case the names. Now you'd probably want to see that running just before we get into the proper case. Here it's asking me for my name. So I'm going to be Andy Wick still, because that's what they called me. And I'm still 23, and since I went up by 10 centimetres in the last section, I'll go up by another 10. Now it asks for my name again. I'm going to press Enter, and notice that it doesn't ask for age or height. It just asked for the name. And in name, age, height, we have Andy Wicks in the proper casing, 23 and 1.41, on separate lines of data. So let's go back and see how the proper case was created. Here is that method proper case. And in proper case, I'm going to take in a string, which I'm going to call in. Now we know that it's a name in is going to get used in this method to create the real version of the name. So now I'm going to declare a couple of strings. I'm going to have a string called out and that's what we're going to send back to the program. And I'm going to create an array of strings called word. And word is going to get split by every space. It's usual, of course, in names to put a space between the names. So if I split the whole thing into words, we then get each word separately and can deal with that word on its own. So, for i equals zero, this is just a normal for loop, whilst i is less than the length of the array word, add one to i. So it's going to keep going round and round the array of words. And with each one, it's going to do this complicated looking thing. Right. What it's going to do is going to add to out for each word the first letter between 0 and 1, the first letter, and it's going to make that uppercase. It's then going to add to that first letter all the other letters, in other words, from 1 onwards, and it's going to force those to be lowercase. And then it's going to add a space. And it will keep doing that for each word it finds. So if there are two names in my name, it's going to do that for two names. If there were 27 names, it would do it for all 27. The final line here, return out, returns the value of out, in other words, this new version of the name, and all it's doing with the trim is taking that very last space off the end. We don't need it for the last one, but putting an if statement in there is a pain. So let's cheat a little bit and just trim it. And that's how the proper case works. Now let's move on to the second test. Shift F6. It asks for my name. And I'm going to type in Andy Wicks. I'm going to be 23 still. And now I'm 1.51. Breakfast was big. 
Now I'm going to add the Queen. And her age is 83, and she, as we know, is 185 as well. Now it asks for the next name, and obviously there isn't one. I press OK, and now in name, age, height, dot text, we have each item of data on a separate line, and the Queen is properly cased as well. So in this video, I've shown you how to get input from the user, how to ensure that the data is in one of two formats, either everything on a line or on separate lines, and I've shown you how to turn names into proper case.